everything you do with bees, there should never be any leftover. So I have some beeswax and I want to melt it down and I want to show you, I've done this two times before. Um, you know, we've had bees for over a year and you only get the wax off whenever you harvest. So the only time I've gotten wax is when I've harvested. And this is an old bag from when I was having to buy beeswax before we got bees. So I've just been storing it in that bag. But this will be my final product. Um, and you, you can see I use these 10 cans. And what I do is I have my little shredder in here. When I make something like diaper rash cream or sunscreen or anything like that, I can pull my little shredder out and shred what I need. So we're gonna get started um, melting this wax down and I'm gonna show you how I clean it up. Um, before we get started though, I wanna tell you about us going live. So we're just gonna start going live and we're super excited about that. Wednesday nights at eight, so y'all be sure to um, check, check that out. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first things first, if you have heat source outside, the best place to do this is outside. Unfortunately, I don't have a heat source outside, so I'm gonna have to do it on my stove. It does get messy. So I've got some parchment paper. I also have some wax paper that I'm gonna kinda lay out and use as I'm pouring and stuff like that because you can get a paint scraper and scrape it off, but that, it just gets messy. So if you can do it outside, do it outside. Also, whatever you allocate for wax, pans. Um, now, this is actually a new pan because what I had done in the past with my smaller batches of wax was I would double boil this and put it in here and then pour it in this one. Um, but we have an extra pot this year. Since our milker is now working, we don't have to have so many pots to rotate around. So I have an extra pot that I'm going to use. And once you put wax in something, I have designated a spoon and cans just for wax only because it's nearly impossible to get it completely cleaned out. So what I use for wax, I keep for wax. So let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is fill this up enough with water to where I can get my wax in and I'm going to slowly put wax in there and I want to melt it down but I want to have enough water in there um, to keep the wax going. So I'm going to put some water in my pan. All right, I'm gonna get this on low, low medium, and I'm gonna start putting my wax over in here and letting it melt down. Um, and I will adjust the camera to let you look inside the pot to see kind of what it looks like step by step as we go. So let's get some of the wax in here. And the darker it is, the dirtier it is. So here's inside my pot, and you can see that it's starting to melt. And I did go ahead and bump it up to more of like a medium high. And you can see that it's starting to melt. And this is why I say allocate pot, designate. I don't know where that other word come from pots just for this because this wax will be near impossible to get off again I and mean, you can clean it again with hot water but to just get it perfectly clean like it's just not gonna happen so you can see that it's starting to melt I still have a few more chunks in there that need to melt down right here but it's really starting to melt so we're gonna go ahead and add some more wax to this Harley don't get burned you can pick it up and, and put it in there. Just there, there you go. Don't don't drop it too hard though, it'll splatter. There you go. And also I meant to tell you guys earlier that if you do, do this outside and you're over like an open flame, 
Um, wax is flammable, so just be careful. It once you get your heat up to a point to where your wax doesn't boil and get on your fire because it is flammable and it will catch on fire. So just be mindful of that when you plan and set yours up to do what you're going to do to clean your wax. Um, and like I said earlier, I have designated old green bean cans from an event that we had several years ago. I used to put colors, you can see the red color mark on the outside, colors and markers and stuff in these for our school. Um, you can still see the color on the inside, but um, when, when I needed something to do wax, I decided that I was going to use these tin cans. So you can use what you've got you just have to kind of look around and see what's old what you're not going to use we decided to use these um now that i have reusable cheesecloth i'm going to try to clean mine in some boiling water so that i can continue to reuse it and what i do is i just take these safety pins and drape my cheesecloth in there and clip the cheesecloth on the side and just strain it through and you guys will see me do that but again it's just using what i got i didn't want to buy any i didn't want to invest a lot of money in bowling wax my wax down i wanted to try to use what i had to make it make sense for us so that's what we're doing okay as you can see harley's stirring for me so be careful harley that it's, I still have some wax chunks. That was all the wax that I had. I still have some wax chunks that need to melt down, but you can see all the impurities in there that it's so nasty. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get my cheesecloth set up and I'm going to show them the tin cans are. I'm gonna get a touch of water, put in the bottom of those cans and some cheesecloth on the top and I'm going to set that up so you can see it. It's on. So what I'm going to do now is I have this cheesecloth that I bought from Amazon. And I really, really like it because we use it to strain our milk in the mornings. And then when I get done with it, because it's cloth cheesecloth, it's 100% unbleached cotton cheesecloth. When we get done straining our milk, we wash it out, but then like every other day or so, I'll take this cloth and I'll drop it in a pot of boiling water and I'll boil it and then hang it up and let it dry. So I love the fact that this is reusable. Our kitchen is full of our homestead stuff. So like everything you see behind us is either, this basket is full of zucchini, I've got my homemade sunscreen, I'm ready for the farmer's market, there's a bucket of honey back there. Um, from where we harvested so everything my house is just geared towards the homestead it can't be neat and tidy all the time so um there's one of our zucchinis that we picked yesterday okay so we got to get moving hard this is almost ready so what i want to do now get me a napkin baby is i'm going to cut a square of this off And I have always used the just regular disposable cheese ball. So I'm going to try my hardest to clean this and see how it goes. I'm going to double layer this because I want to filter out as much impurities, grit and grain that get in this beeswax as I can. I'm going to lay this over and kind of push it in a little bit. And then I'm going to take these clothespins and I'm just going to, let me see them all. Can you go in the room and get me some more for that one? So I'm going to do two buckets this time because I think that I'm going to have a lot of wax. And I don't want to overflow these. So I'm going to um, do two buckets this time. Now I'm going to pour, run just a little bit of water in the bottom. I do have some water in here and the wax and the water will separate. But I'm going to give it a little bit of extra water. Probably fill this bucket up to about this line right here. Because you're, what's going to happen in here is as your wax comes back together, 
and um, then you can pop it out and use it like in your block form what I sh showed you earlier. So let's fill this up with water so we can, because um, we're just going to get ready to pour this up. Our uh, wax is melted completely down. I'm not sure we turned the camera, so I'm not sure if you can see that. So I just flipped the heat off because I want to keep it as hot as possible. Carly, baby, please stay back so this won't splash on me. So what I've done, I got our other container ready. I got water in the bottom of both of them. And I've got some parchment paper, wax paper, anything like that that you can put down. So if this splatters any, you want to try to keep it off of your um, countertops and stuff like that as best as possible. Because like I said, you can get it up with a knife or a paint scraper or whatever. But to just avoid all those extra steps, I put down some wax paper. So let's go ahead and start pouring. And please be very careful because it does get very hot. Very, very hot. And you're going to see the glunk, just the junk coming out of the top. I still have a lot of wax to go, but because it's so dirty, it's so dirty, I'm pretty much full. So I'm going to have to let that sit for just a minute, and I'm going to start on this one, and I may have to take all this off, put my um, cheesecloth in some boiling water to loosen up the wax before I can start pouring through it again. And um, what you don't want is your wax to start cooling on the bottom before it all strains through. Um, or then you're, you're going to have a lot of wasted wax. So I'm just using my, I'm gonna use my spoon and kind of just move that around and get as much of that through as I can. Well, it's actually going through now. So we're going to keep trying to boil. I'm going to bump that back on the heat. I wiped out as much as I could, but I'm going to fill it back up with water, heat it back up, and do it again. So I'm going to just leave this. I'm going to keep working with it. When I get done, I'm going to take my clothespins off. I'm going to dump this gunk, this gunk that's right here, the, all these impurities that you see. I'm going to just dump that um, actually outside by the bees because a lot of times they'll clean this stuff up. That goes back to the no waste. They'll clean all this up and um, reuse it. What they don't want can just stay out there. Um, and then I'm going to take my cheesecloths and I'm going to put in some water too and just kind of soften up that wax as much as I can. Um, okay, so I didn't want to shortchange y'all and let you miss anything. So I went ahead and charged the battery up as um, much as I could to get it back on and I'm going to talk kind of quick to show you what I'm doing. So this is what this looks like here. Um, with that strained on top, you can see that it's starting to harden underneath. So I moved it around to let as much drain out as I could. So the rest of this, I'm, you're worth it, so I'm walk down to the bees and put it down out by the bees because they'll clean that up. And my pot, I ran some boiling water in there and probably about to right here. And I just kind of tipped it around, tipped the water around all across the top. And then I just took a napkin and just wiped it out. Okay, so now let's walk this down to the bees. You can see the there's still some impurities down in there. Mm -hmm. Some of that was from the old wax that I had last time. So I will have to clean this again and I'm gonna have to get this bucket cleaned better from last time. I and mean, you can still see that I have some impurities in there from last time. Okay, y'all can see that this is starting to harden. This one is starting to harden. So there's nothing really else I can do to these. I'm gonna move these off to the side and let them completely hardened. They're still pretty hot. So they just have to go off to the side and cool. So what I'm doing now is I've got a pretty good bit of water in this pot and I'm going to take our cheesecloths outside and run that boiling water over these several times until I get this cleaned off. On those specks that are in there that are in the wax, I don't want that. So obviously I'm going to have to clean it again. So once our water is ready, um, we're going to go out and we're going to clean this off.
Okay, so I wanted to, I checked this a while ago to see kind of how we were. And this actually hardened up faster than what I thought. So I wanted to show you this. I already popped this one out of this can. And that's what the top looks like. That's what the bottom looks like. Now, I'm going to wipe that off with a napkin in a minute because you can see it's just got a lot of grit and grime in it. And you can tell that this water was just disgusting. So I'm just going to pour that out outside. I mean, you can see there's nothing else down in there. It just goes all the way to the bottom. So my next one, I'm going to do the... Let me go ahead and move these over. Move these off. Okay. So I popped this one out a while ago, but you can see all you have to do is just push it down, down, and it kind of floats up. And I will have to repeat this process tomorrow. And when I do, you'll see that all those impurities will get filtered out again in our cloths. And I and it will look more like this was my two last times combined in one, which is why it's so big. This was two different times combined in one. So smells like honey. It smells amazing. Um, so this is what it will ultimately turn out to look like. Um, but we just have to repeat the process and get it cleaned up again. That's all it is to clean in your wax um, to make it usable. Um, some people make candles with this and all, I mean there's just all sorts of things you can do with the wax. So it's really cool to be able to learn how to clean your wax if you do have bees or if you're thinking about bees. Um, you, you could just take your whole wax and let it uh, everything out and let the bees clean it all up. But um, if you can get another product out of your honey, you've got your honey and you've got your bees wax, it's like a two for one kind of deal. So um, that's how you do it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Uh, please like and please subscribe um, to our channel. We try to teach you guys everything that we know to do. So um, if you enjoy that, please subscribe. And don't forget, live on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock central. Happy homesteading, y'all.